upon the whole entire world from all the enemies that we have so many of them. If I'll ask you what shalom means, peace means, by you, most of the people think that shalom, it means that we are not fighting. We have peace at home. We are not fighting. Uh, basically, shalom, peace, it means more of friendship, more of understanding, more of wanting to be together. How important is shalom? By the halakha, by Judaism, it is so important that God said certain mitzvot, the positive mitzvot, the to-do mitzvot that's connected to time, women are exempt from that. Why? Because if she has to do what I have to do, I, as a husband, at this particular time, I will tell her to do something, and she's going to I'm sorry, I'm right now talking to God, I'm in the middle of Shona, I say, I don't want to do that. It's going to be a bring conflict. Why? Because if she will not do what I want, I'm going to be angry. But in the other hand, if she will not do what God wants from her, she's going to have problems with God. Therefore, God says, you know what, for this, those mitzvot of to do, you are exempt from that. The not to do mitzvot, it's easy. You don't do, so no problem there. Now, there is a story in the Gemara about Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir used to give Friday night after Arvit, he used to give some different Torah, people used to listen to him. Among them was a woman that, for whatever reason, used to go to Kenisa, used to go to the Knesset Friday night, and stay for the Shi'ur of Rabbi Meir. It just happened that this particular Friday night, Rabbi Meir spoke a little bit too much, by the time that she came home, her husband was hungry and angry. And angry. Where have you been? I'm so sorry. I was listening to the rap. You know what? I don't let you come home. Can you go and spit in the face of this rabbi that doesn't understand what it means a woman supposed to be at home. No? How are you going to go speak in the face of the rabbi? This bad bad woman, she was out. Out for Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. Friends here try to tell them, listen, this is not nice what you do. I don't care. I will not let her go. Somehow the words came to Rabbi Meir. And Rabbi Meir announced, my eyes are hurting me, and I need someone to, who knows how to make spell kishuf that need to spit into my eye. Any woman who knows how to do that, please, Welcome. The women, the neighbors, said to her, listen, this is your opportunity. Go. The rabbi is asking for that. Go. No, but the rabbi, why? She went. She was shaking. Do you know how to make spells? I'm sorry, I don't know. It's okay. If you don't know how to make the spell, just spit into my eyes seven times. But rather, seven times spit. She did. 
the rabbi said to her, go to, to your husband and tell him, you ask me to speak one time, I expect seven times. The students of Rabbi Meir, when they heard it, they said, Rabbi, why you didn't tell us? We would go and teach him a lesson that he would let his wife come home and live in peace. Teaching a lesson meaning, you know, break some bones. He said, what? I am different than God. If God wants to put peace upon husband and wife, where the husband suspected, rightfully or not, that his wife is uh, talking too much to men alone, or even doing something. At that time, we have a system in Bethlehem Dash that the Kohen, the husband, will bring the wife to Bet HaMikdash. The Kohen will write the chapter of Parashat Isha Sota, where the name of God mentioned there several times. And he will put it run with the ground into a bottle and shake it, and the name of God will be wiped out. And then he will give her to drink it. If she was okay, nothing would happen to her. If unfortunately she did something, miraculously she would explode. Today we don't have it, Baruch Hashem. Now, how come God himself tell, tells us that you are allowed to wipe my name, where otherwise wiping the name of God is absolutely prohibited. So how come, what's the logic there? And the logic is very simple. Yes, we wiping the letters of Hashem. But Hashem, one of the names that Hashem has is Shalom, as I mentioned it at the beginning. Shalom means peace. By wiping the letters of Hashem, the word of God disappeared, wiped out. But the essence of peace just moved to the house of that husband and wife, and they have peace and harmony now in their home. This is the concept of why HaKadosh Baruch Hu let wipe out his name. Now, in order to put, to, to put peace upon husband and wife, one of the commands that we have, where it doesn't count as do not do, we have do not kill, do not steal, do not, do not, do not. When it comes to tell a lie, the Torah said to us, Midevar Sheker Terchak, sustain yourself from lying. The Torah doesn't tell us, don't lie, don't bring yourself to a position, to a situation that you have to lie. Why? Because Hashem is a met. The seal of Akadosh Baruch Hu is a met. Truth. But, funny enough, when the Malachim coming to Abraham and Sarah and telling Abraham, you know, next year, you're going to be a hundred years old, you're going to be a father. Sarah then, listening from her tent, and she said to herself, <laughs> my husband is an old man, how I'm going to have a child from him? Adonisa can got Zoom come to Abraham and said why Sarah there is laughing saying that she is an old lady is it hard for me to make sure at any age that she will have children 
But we see that God himself is lying. She said, my master, my husband is an old man. And God changed it. Why is that? Because to have peace at home, it worked. Sometimes, white lies. Don't take it as permission to lie left and right. Only just to put some peace at home. After those words, created by the system that he called human being, certain things that caused us to act dif differently. For example, we want to eat. So God put into our DNA the feeling of hunger, to be hungry. Otherwise, we would not eat. We would not eat, we would not have energy. We, our body will deteriorate. So we feel hungry, and therefore we eat. And when we satisfy, we stop eating. God put into us this unique system that if we see something is flying to us, we close our eyes, we shut our eyes right away. God put in our system that if we touch something very, very hard, we don't think twice, we just tap automatically we take our hands from this sharp item or hot item or whatever it is. Why? People want to share their life with someone else. Honestly, it doesn't make sense. As singles, we are independent, we do what we want to do, nobody will tell us what to do, and Baruch Hashem, it's good, it's good. So how come people sharing life? Doesn't make sense. It's because God put into our system this desire to share our lives. Why? Because sharing life it's basically coming out of being together pleasantly with someone or the feeling of distress. Meaning, I'm all by myself. I'm talking to the world. Life is really, it's boring. Ask anyone that is single for quite a few years if he would be honest enough, the main thing that's bothering him is loneliness. I have no one. Because all the married friends, they have their own problem, and he's by himself. The question is, what makes us to get married? Or which one is more important? To be with someone and enjoy the company of someone? Or finally, I have someone that I can talk to and share many things with. When I ask people why you are still married, can you tell me some some reason? Why you you're, how many how long you are married? A year. A year. Baruch Hashem. Why are you still married? Baruch Hashem, it's only one year. Why are you are married? Good question. Good question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Happiness. Family, please. Say it again. Family. 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 Children. Uh, our mutual house. You know, yeah. that's my name, her name. Parnasa. The what? Fulfillment, what fulfillment? Yeah, because you're connected. You're connected? Complete. Complete? Yes. Baruch Hashem. 
I hope you really believe in that. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, most of the reason that people saying, okay, you know, I got used to that already, and so on and so on, it's that they are not answering why you are married, but they are answering why you did not get divorced yet. I did not get divorced because I have kids. I need to do fulfillment. My home, my business, she's partner, whatever. But most of the people, getting married because God put in our DNA the desire at certain point in our life to find someone to share our life regardless that I'm losing my independence regardless the feeling that you know when I ask people who's wearing the pants at, home, at your home no one. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'm not embarrassed to say that. Those people who heard me already, they know. In my home, I wear the pants. <laughs> but my wife said to me, which pants to wear and which color to wear. <laughs> <laughs> now, once I got married because I was lonely. Amazingly, as I get connected with my wife, this feeling of loneliness disappeared, and I don't understand why I'm married. Unlike eating, I'm hungry, I eat, I'm satisfied, and if I ask, why did you eat? Because I was hungry. Why you are married? Not because I was lonely. Because I wanted to share my life with someone. And why this is happening? Because we get used to our wife, our children, our business, to support each other, and all of a sudden, there is no time to think, why? I just need to roll the machine day by day by day by day, sharing smachot, sharing other things, and hopefully, one day, I will be happy. Now, There are some, what we call, connective needs between husband and wife. And today, tonight, as much as time will permit, I will talk a bit the different needs between male and female. Once we, male, will understand what we need. Once the female, our spouses, will understand what are our needs as men, as male, we will understand their needs. Many things will be so clear that you will be surprised. And I'll be honest with you, when I was preparing this Sheul, I said to myself, wow, and don't think for a second that I'm an angel. I'm far away from it. I have also things between my spouse and I that we don't agree, we, we do agree, it, and so on and so on. But if you pay attention, hopefully whatever I read, whatever I prepared will come in a way that you will understand it. So many things between you and your spouses will be so clear. So, to begin with, a 
every one of us, at any given moment, we feel the need to have something. We are needy people, needy creatures. And each one of us have a different needs at different times. Many things that we think we got married to our spouses because we are alike. I like what she likes and she likes what I like. And this is what we thought when we got married, you know. We are matching. But it is far from true. Even though, even though, by Judaism, A male and a female are basically a neshama that was in heaven, a complete neshama, and God just split it. He threw one, in my case, for example, <coughs> in Israel, and the other half in Afghanistan, and somehow I wanted to come to America. I used to make fun of everyone who left Israel to come to any place. But all of a sudden, I'm coming to America. Sure enough, in a very short time, I found my wife. Amazing. Israel, Afghanistan, I never knew where is Afghanistan. But God split the Nashamot, threw me a few years ahead of her, and then somehow I end up in the Kenisa, the Bet Knesset, that her father is there, and somehow he liked me, Baruch Hashem. <laughs> and we got married. Our Neshamat <clears throat> got together. We would think that basically, if I'm half of her, so our DNA is the same. It's wrong. It's not the same. The Neshamat is the same thing. But God put different things for you, different things for her. In most of the cases, what we lack, the spouse had, and what they lack, we complete it. And this is where you just said before, we're completing each other. If you look at the fingers, it goes wherever needs to be there. The vacuum that we have, we complete, we complete each other. Because of this needy thing that we have, we want, we have the need to be in a society. Society starts from one person that we get connected to through her, him, we get connected to his family and the extended family all of a sudden as I said to one of my uh, friends students why you have to invite the whole world for Askara for Ushua I said Rabbi I invited only my family 500 people <laughs> only family so this is the extended family, the extended society. God says, Lot of Hayot Adam Levador. It is not good for a man to be by himself. And therefore, I created, I will create Ezer Kenegdo, help against him. Well, is this help? Most of us, we feel that, you know, our spouse really took the command of God to the team. They are against us all the time. Whatever I say, she said no. Whatever she wants, I say no. But most of the time, she's against me. And this is called help? Absolutely. Anyone who do some exercise in order to develop our muscles we either take some weight that 
goes against our will to pick it up. So the heavier the weight pulling us down, going against us, better muscles we get. We want to do push-ups, okay? We go against the floor. Everything that is against us, it's basically come to help us. The main thing that women came to this world is to help us to do our tikkun. We didn't come here to have kaif konim, to enjoy mm -hmm. ourselves. No. We all came here because previously, either last generation, mm -hmm. hundred generations ago, or who knows when, we did something that God brought us again. He brought us again <laughs> to deal and to complete what we have to do correctly. But God knows, we, we men, you know, sometimes we just, our head is not there. He sent us an angel to save us, to help us, our wives. How many times we men heard from our wives, stop with this iPhone, go to study, stop with these shows and books and doing nothing. All the time, they're telling us what to do, what to do, what to do. Enough! Yes, enough. Because we don't understand that basically she tried to help us. The same thing that we do to our kids. Don't do, do, don't do, don't do, 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 don't do, don't do. To the point that, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, the mothers hear it more. They're hearing some not so nice words from their children. They will never dare to tell us men, fathers, because in a split of a second, they will count their teeth on the floor. But the mother is merciful. Jana, it's not nice to talk like that to mommy. So stop it. Don't tell me what to do. We have less tolerance for our wife that she is nagging us. Do, do, don't do, 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 don't do, don't do. But if we understand that it comes to help us to fulfill our tikkun, that's it. We will appreciate every command that our wife will tell us. But in order to have a wonderful life together, we have to understand that there is a difference between male and female in understanding concept of life. How many times we came from work tired, which I don't understand why, because really anyone who is independent, he can work, finish his work in one hour. The rest of the eight hours, he just pay, take papers from left side, move them to the right side on the phone for half an hour, and move them back to the left side, and he comes home I'm so tired. And the wife greet him. Oh, honey, I have such a headache. <laughs> what do you say? So take Tylenol. Take Advil. No, I'm asking you. Do you really think that our spouses are so brainless that the whole eight hours suffering the whole day, I have a headache, they didn't know to take an Advil? Of course they didn't. But this is an opening, an opening for a conversation. This is an opening to please sit down. I want to share a few moments with you. And soon we will see there is much more beyond that. But we men are very boring. Black and white, yes and no. You have a problem, I have immediate solution. <laughs> this is men. Once we understand it, then any response that we will hear from our men, it will be understandable. This is men. But women, they also 
black and white, and all the millions of colors in between. <laughs> when you say no, what do you really mean? <laughs> How many times we asked this question before? <laughs> so when she said, I have a headache, it's really, she wants you to ask her, tell me, Jana, how was your day? How the kids treat you? How your mother drove you nuts, my mother? <laughs> she wants you to sit five minutes next to her and share her agony with you. And what we do? Uh, leave me alone, I'm so tired. There is anything to eat? That's it, we ruin, we ruin the moment. And our spouse is thinking that, you know, my husband is not sensitive. He doesn't care about me. And why we men try to find solutions so fast, to find excuses. Sometimes, you know, when a wife tells us about her difficulties at home, we feel that we basically are not able to supply the, the strength, the trust, the security that our spouse waiting for that. If she complains, it means I fail in supplying her what she needs. We don't like to be failures. So right away, it's either we don't want to hear about it, I'm so tired, leave me alone. Talk to me about it tomorrow. Because currently, I feel attacked. What's the purpose of the wife saying about her difficulties? It's because she wants you to appreciate what she is doing for the family. Because we, what we do for the family, it is kind of trying to do extra. I volunteer to give you extra extra diamond, extra dress, extra vacation. Just feel good. Don't complain. Because if you complain, I'm losing my ground. Yeah, we all are macho. Yeah. <laughs> I never lose anything. Deep down, this is who you are. The wife doesn't understand it. How many times we complain? Why you don't appreciate what I do for you? Because for her, it's nothing so important that you volunteer to do. Because all what she does for the family is my duty. It is my duty to do extra work, to take extra care, to do many things. Therefore, when we do something extra, she doesn't understand it, so it's nothing. It doesn't mean anything to her. But now, when we understand the difference between male and female, so when our wife comes and says to us, how's the food? I think I put extra salt. Is, is it tasty? Unfortunately, we are not so smart. What do we say? Don't you see I eat it? <laughs> yeah, she see it. She's not blind. What she wants from you? She wants you to acknowledge that she did something for home. And if we kind of feel so comfortable 
to give her a compliment, we're doing it so bad. Listen, the food is so good. It's like this person hears from his wife. You know, you don't tell me that you love me. Listen, 50 years ago I said to you I love you. If anything will change, I will let you know. <laughs> when you, when you want to compliment your wife on the food, wow, Jana, you know, I appreciate so much that you went to, to the market to buy, to choose the best ingredient. And I know, we eating the food 10 minutes, but you worked on that hours. I, I do appreciate everything that you do for us. And on top of that, it's so delicious. You put the right ingredient, the right amount of salt, everything to my test. You do better than my mother. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You, you bought her. You bought her. <laughs> Never said, you know, my, my mother cooked better than you. And you know what? Those who are married more than a year, I tell you, Once I got used to the food of my wife, nothing, nothing is like that. And you know what I tell you a story from the time that we got engaged. So I'm coming for breakfast. What do you want to eat? Omelette. Okay, that's it, yeah. No, I didn't know that in Afghanistan, you take a whole pot, and you fill it with oil, butter after butter. <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, Tobe, Tobe, is this what I'm going to eat from now on? <laughs> How many eggs you want? Oh. How many eggs? One, oh, two. No, you are man, you have to eat more. <laughs> tack, boom, tack, boom, <laughs> tack, boom. Four or five eggs, this amount of oil, and eat it. And I hate oil. But Baruch Hashem. I suffered and I survived. And I learned a message. Do not ever criticize the food of your wife. Never criticize if you know what's good for you. <laughs> because they will learn. They will learn. And Baruch Hashem, my mother taught my wife to cook some Persian food. And it's delicious Persian food, you know. Many Ashkenazim eat Persian food. Many Bukharian love the Persian food. Today, my wife, today, in a very short time, she excelled in cooking food to my test. I cannot, I'm telling you honestly, I cannot eat anywhere else. I hate my in-laws food that I used to love, my mother Alayla Shalom food. I stick to my wife. She knows exactly what's good for me and what's better for me. Now, sometimes when we don't understand the needs of our spouses, this brings to some kind of frustration between us. And as I mentioned, even though we think that we're coming from the same neshama, therefore we should be the same thing, it's wrong. It is not like that. Unfortunately, among us, and I guess among the whole world, if you want to have a driver license, we have to take some classes. We have to do some tests. And if Baruch Hashem, we did it, finally we get the, perm the permit to drive. No. Listen, I have such a good girl for you. 
She is perfect for you. Listen, this boy is perfect match for you. And Baruch Hashem, it is. You date once, twice, one month, two, three, and you get married. You don't understand where you put yourself. Among us men, the moment that I put uh, the, uh, the ring into the finger, wow. The love, the heartbeat that I used to see from far, you know, the warm feeling inside, disappeared. And that moment, it disappeared for us men. It's taken by responsibility. Wow. Now I have to feed another mouth. Now I have to pay rent, mortgage, food, kids. Whoa! It was so great to be a singer. So it puts a lot of stress on us. Women, finally I found my prince on a white Mercedes or Volkswagen. She doesn't care. Two, three weeks after, you know, uh, I need a new dress. You brought from home 200 dresses. Why you need another one? No, I don't have nothing to wear. <laughs> and you know? Shoes, your shoes. As, <laughs> as time passed by, you never wear the same dress twice. Not unlike us, you know, I can wear my suit, black suit. For 120 years, nobody will say anything. But God forbid. If a woman wear her dress twice, once 30 years ago, and once today, twice. Wow, the whole neighborhood will talk about it. Because women has wonderful, extreme power of memory. They made a kind of uh, research. They put two men for two hours to talk to each other. At the end, they ask, you know, what color kind of a dress the other men wear? Uh, 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 two hours? Yeah. We didn't pay any attention. We're going to a wedding. Your wife will tell you exactly what kind of earring, what type of lipstick, what kind of dress you wear, what kind of whatever, you know, details. God forbid, 30 years later, she will see that woman with the same dress. <laughs> she never changed that throughout the years. The same thing. It's amazing. Why is that? It's to help us. To help us because we unfortunately so busy to do nothing that we forget the task that we have. <laughs> this is why all the calendars, all the you know the smartphone that we have and we have their to-do list and it's created for us. Women don't need it. We need to go to do shopping with the list, and usually we come half of that. We forgot about it. It's written, but we forgot. <laughs> Women don't need to write anything. They just go directly to the right department, take whatever they need, they move there. In five minutes, they finish the whole entire week of shopping. I, myself, I found it easy that I just take whatever I think that's we need. Whatever I think we need. And Baruch Hashem, this uh, saved me it's my wife doesn't send me anymore to buy.
Now, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, as I mentioned before, we men, we want to make our wives happy. How we can make our wives happy? It's because HaKadosh Baruch Hu put in our system the, the feeling that I need to take care of my wife. I'm a man. I need to take care of her. And therefore, any time that the spouse, the wife, is complaining, he feels that there is a gap between what I have to do and what I didn't do, even though I supplied everything. The wife, at the same time, when she complained about something, she really doesn't want to complain about anything. She just wants you to acknowledge that she is also giving something to the task of creating a home. I do A, B, C, D. I know that you work very hard. I know that your boss scream at you. I know that the client already promising you two years to pay the bill and is not. I know I'm aware of that. I know that you are very stressful. But my way of complaining is basically telling you I am also participating in the task that we need to do. So therefore, if the spouse, the man, when you complain about something and he shot you right then and there, you have to understand he is afraid that he didn't fulfill his mission. And therefore, it will be nice if the wife will give a warning. A warning. Listen, I'm not complaining. I just want you to know that I did A, B, C, D at home as appreciation, as help to the humongous work that you do. We, unfortunately, we need a little bit of ego. We have ego. We need compliments. Monday I spoke about how important is that to compliment each other. And please, please, it doesn't cost money. It is wrong when we think if I tell my wife that she's beautiful, that she does ABC, Oh, now she's going to raise her nose and she's going to sing, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. It's wrong. We like women more than women. We like to be complimented. Because it's acknowledgement from our spouses that I do my job. And I do that good. To the point that, you know what? I really appreciate the new thing that you bought for home. I, you know what, the watch, it's so beautiful that you gave me for my birthday. I know it's expensive. I know that you work so hard for that. I adore it. We feel so good. I did something and my wife likes it. I love the way that she talked to the kids. The woman said to her, the husband, he barely sit with them. Barely sit. He doesn't have time. Do that. I told you. How many times I have to explain to you? No. How many times? A hundred times. But the wife, Jana, one plus one is not three. Count. One, two. One plus one, three. Let's do it again. We then. Besides that, we're going to put extra not nice words and sometimes we use foreign language. I want you to be aware foreign language is not Bukharian, Persian, Chinese, or Yiddish. Foreign language, it's a language that should not be spoken at home. It's a language that uses the F word left and right. 
do not lose it at home. No matter what is the situation there. There is nothing degrading that you mention those foreign languages in front of the mezuzah, in front of the Shekhinah, the, the heavenly presence at home. The street language, keep it in the street to the people of the street. Don't get there. Not you as a man, not you as a female. It's not there. Men are restless. And why is that? God put it into our system to be like that because we need all the time to make sure that whatever home needs, I will provide. What my wife, my kids, and the whole environment of home. This is why we sometimes don't have patience for nonsense. You have a problem, I have the solution. So tell me in short what you need. Because if we talk too much about too many things, we, we get afraid. This is men. And if the women will understand it, it will be much easier to handle us. And believe me, it's very easy to handle men. By now you learn. Those people that married quite a few years, they learn the trick. Just, okay, whatever you say, and do later whatever you want to do. It's very wow. simple. Just compliment him, and that's it. <laughs> it's amazing that during the very first few months, year of marriage, things are not working well. Why is that? The men want to make sure that everything is correct, everything is good. And the woman, she doesn't understand anything because we don't have preparation for marriage. We do not talk about men and women before we get married. We don't have a license to get married. Talking about license of marriage. In parenthesis, this is a new uh, thing that I'm delivering recently because of whatever is happening in our communities. The fact that you have a child, it means you are a male and she is a female. Nothing else. And if you got married, you have the ketubah, it means you have a license to bring a child. By no mean, by no way, it makes you father or mother. It doesn't make you automatically a parent. To be a parent, you need to read books, to listen to lectures, videos, and more videos, and more books, and more lectures the rest of your life because being a parent this is the task of your life and when you don't know how to do that this is why we're losing so many kids from our communities and all around because parents at your age coming from a concept that few generations ago the, the head of the family he didn't know why we have why God put mouth because mouth is not to talk they used to talk with their eyes if the eyes went to the left the wife tak 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 brought child if it went to the right she was very afraid she did something wrong but today it doesn't work this is why you have to learn how to be first of all husband and wife 
and then how to be a parent. Now, so at the beginning, we as newlywed, I as a chatan, as a Baal, husband, I think that I give the best for my wife. I don't understand her needs. I don't understand that she needs. Our Chachamim said to us, every holiday, it's a mitzvah to buy a dress and a jewelry for your wife. I used to say that in my Kenisa, and unfortunately some rude people used to come to my wife, no, what did you buy you? See, this is a new ring, this is a new chain, this is a necklace, etc., etc. You have to do that. I know that you will hate me for that, but this is a mitzvah beside that will make your wife so happy. So happy. Do that. The same way that you put the filling every holiday, and it's coming soon, 40 days. Okay? <laughs> Rosh Hashanah, Sukkot, Pesach. <laughs> and the <laughs> hot is in two weeks, less. Than <laughs> less. <laughs> Another, Everything. you write yeah. for your yeah. life every push for this. By the way, men, please put in your calendar the birthday of your spouse <laughs> with the week warning ahead. Do not, do not. Miss the birthday of your wife, if you know what's good for you. And another thing, okay? If you're smart enough to know what she needs, buy it for her. If not, don't come home empty hand. okay? You have to do that. Now, Sometimes we know we feel that we, husband, really don't care about our wives, which is very wrong. There is nothing, and I'm telling you, nothing stronger in our feelings toward our spouses more than to make sure that I do the best for my wife. The best for my wife. But here comes, my best, not necessarily is her best. And therefore, do not ever reject anything that your husband is giving you. Not even a compliment. How many times your husband gave you a compliment and you Ah, you don't mean it. You don't mean it. <laughs> Tell me what you want from me now. You know, every sentence like this, it's, you know what, next time I'm not going to compliment you. So what if it's not your love language? What is what? It's not your love language. You're not, you don't like compliments. You don't compliment? She doesn't like compliments. What do you do with people who don't like compliments? Uh, like please, your... please come to therapy. I charge <laughs> not so much. There is no person on earth that do not like compliment. If you don't like compliment, it means you're afraid to give compliments. Don't give me so I don't have to give you. But there is nothing better to show that I appreciate someone, I love someone, to compliment. Compliment is the encouragement that I give you to do more for me. Well, I like the tie that you wear. Wow, thank you. I appreciate it so much. No, it's a, I bought it one dollar outside. No, I appreciate it so much. So she will give you more compliment. You understand? And not necessary, when we compliment, it's because we want something in return. I just feel so good. I am complimenting you. I want to encourage you to do more of the same. Not complimenting 
it's a disaster. Please go for a therapist. You have to give compliments and know how to receive compliments. It is very, very important how to receive compliments. Now, when we men get compliments from our wife, it's for us is recognition that we do something for home. I do something and it's noticeable. This is why it is very important for us men to get compliments, left and right, left and right. But not, of course, you know, oh, you look so good. <laughs> <laughs> you, lose, you lose the whole moment. <laughs> why, you, you want to mock me? It's I'll show you. <laughs> and, and I don't know why, when we want to retaliate, we do tachiyat ametim. What is meant tachiyat ametim? Your father, your grandmother, your great grandmother, you know, Tahiyat Amitim thousand generations back. <laughs> Don't do that. But if you give compliment, I stay there from the bottom of your heart. Because a fake compliment, everyone can feel it. We men didn't learn this phrase, ah, oh, you don't mean it. We just ignore it. Therefore, compliment and kind of make it as authentic as it's possible. For us, you know, we say toda, toda la kadosh baruch hu, thanks. HaKadosh Baruch Hu for Modeani, it's the very first thing that we say to God when we wake up. Modeani lefanecha. Okay? Thank you God for whatever you did for me. So if I'm thanking God and you are a creator of God, why not to thank you, to compliment you for whatever you do and don't do for everything that you do, I'm, I'm complimenting. No. For this and that and that. Be specific. Bezat Hashem, I, time is going running. But well, this class should be part one, part two, part three. Yeah. So yeah. next time that we will be here, we will talk a little bit more about the needs of the wives. I choose to put the needs of the men first because our needs, it's not recognized by our spouses. He's a man, he can tolerate anything. Even if I scream at him, he deserves it, but it will not hurt him. It hurts us. We just don't want to show that we are so sensitive, so we don't say anything. But for the whole day, our day is ruined. And I want you to know that. Do not ever send your husband to work. Ah, you're good for nothing. Let's see what you're going to bring today. <laughs> nothing like that. Never. I wish you the best. I know you are the best salesman. You are the best husband. I couldn't think of anyone else. Even if you don't mean it. Just say it. Because it's the energy for the whole day. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you so much. I always say that I, I prepare to say things. I just want to show you. I have another uh, 20 pages to talk about it. But this is what God wants me to say for you to hear. Thank you very much. Thank you. All the best to uh, the people in uh, the Zoom.